down tick and now uh, intraday revival is coming up we have satish ramanathan who is uh, joining us uh, on the show to talk about markets satish afternoon thanks so much for your time uh, firstly i want to understand uh, from you i was just looking at some data points uh, how the valuation differential between mid cap and the large cap is only widening on the one hand large cap universe uh, the valuations are low earning expectations are the low but the mid and small cap universe valuations are also at a premium 10 year high and also the expectation of earnings going forward where is the risk over here the jaw will eventually close right either large cap undervalued will start moving or the mid caps overvalued will start start moving which side will move first in your view so uh, i think the large cap uh, has kind of uh, cooled off a little earlier than the mid cap and small caps and it's also got to do with the flow of money because the flow of money is predominantly from the local markets so you have domestic retail and dii's investing whereas fii's are either selling or uh, keeping quiet so either way the, they typically focus on the large cap and consequently the mid and small cap continues to outperform now valuations uh, for mid and small are about that 20 to 25% premium to the large cap peers and uh, i think this is likely to continue if the structure of the market is uh, remains the way it is and uh, for the gap to uh, converge it either requires uh, some change in uh, sentiment or it has to be induced by external flows from fis mm. right satish also the second part i want to understand is banks liquidity is tight right now rbi believe it is seasonal uh some are expecting some moves in the near term but can't say when till liquidity is eased out the deposit growth will lag the credit growth does it mean for a quarter or two banking universe and ims could remain under pressure because they will have to uh you know give higher rates to attract more capital uh, more liquidity as deposits yes uh, to some extent uh, the fight for capital will continue uh because domestic savings has come down and uh, banks typically tap domestic savers uh such as corporates and retail to uh, uh lend onward and retail savings rate has come down to some extent and corporate capex has also revived so corporate incremental savings would come down into the future so it's our assumption that uh, deposit rates will continue to remain uh, on an upward trajectory for some time hmm right satish i also want to understand from you where do you see a uh, margin of safety coming in in the market where are you nibbling in right now where risk reward appears sure. quite uh, comfortable to you so i think uh, healthcare uh, and uh, pharma names have gone through a, a, a long term structural adjustment and seem to be coming out of that valuations are reasonable cash flows are good so i think pharma is one area where we are looking at uh, it sector also gives a decent risk reward because the growth is not factored in valuations are reasonable so uh, the it sector is also okay uh, while we like india related stories in consumption infra and uh, psus i think the value of uh, safety value of uh, in a margin is uh, more in the lower valued uh, stocks value stocks per se at this juncture mm. where are you trimming uh, your positions or churning out of where you think valuations do not justify the earnings so some of the infra names uh, where execution may be a challenge that's where we are probably uh, trimming uh, or reallocating some of the profits to uh, names which are a little more defensive hmm i want to come back on uh, uh, you know the psus once again 
yesterday prime minister modi again made a big pitch in fact uh, talking about how efficiencies and profitability outlook of psus have increased a whole lot improved a whole lot past few years but how much of the good news is already in the price in your view especially defense and railways so uh, in in the case of defense uh, we need to watch how they execute because you know uh, ramping up ship building or aircraft manufacturing takes time it doesn't happen overnight and uh, the markets have kind of anticipated a uh, uh, fast execution and there could be disappointments along the way on execution so we are a little cautious uh, on that side where uh, execution could be a challenge in the case of infra as well we see that uh, execution could remain a challenge it's not that all the bottlenecks have been cleared the pace of execution has improved no doubt but it's still something which we need to watch and control which of the earnings caught your attention this time around out of the earnings season uh, which came out any sectors themes where the revenue growth is also there because the large observation was that yes profit growth is there but revenue growth has been slightly on the weaker side so uh, i think uh, the revenue growth has been a little weak because of two reasons one is that the volume growth has itself come down a little bit the second is that uh, some of the companies have passed on the benefits of lower commodity prices so uh, as a result uh, the revenue growth appears muted while the ebitda growth has remained fairly strong so i think uh, we need to uh, look at the underlying reasons for each of these uh, categories uh, where the, where revenue growth is flattish and understand why it is so uh, in general we think there is a slight recovery on the agri side and a recovery on the uh, consumption from rural india so we think that two wheelers would be an area where uh, the cost benefit is favorable and we also see some benefit been coming in from uh, some of the uh, it names as well where uh, i think the uh, risk reward is favorable all right uh, we we'll let you go on that one thanks so much for joining us today satish uh, we'll take a short break but before that also hear out some commentary coming from the regulator regarding this entire ptm issue